Cappadocia. The rock formations that make up Cappadocia were created by volcanic eruptions, erosion, and wind. Over 3 million years ago a volcanic eruption deposited a blanket of ash across the 1,500 square miles of landscape which formed into a soft rock. This rock, slowly eaten away by wind and time, has created some spectacular forms. Resulting landscape is one of harmony and consideration of the intrinsic values of the natural landforms. But nowhere else is the ingeniousness of the ancient architecture more visible than in the nearby subterranean cities of Darinkuyu and Kamakli. Darinkuyu is 11 levels deep, has 600 entrances, many miles of tunnels connecting it to other underground cities, and can accommodate thousands of people. It is truly an underground city, with areas for sleeping, stables for livestock, wells, water tanks, bits for cooking, ventilation shafts, communal rooms, bathrooms, and tombs. More than 40 complete underground cities and 200 underground structures have been discovered in the Cappadocia, many of them connecting to each other via tunnel. Cappadocia has an enduring history dating back thousands of years. Neolithic pottery and tools found in Cappadocia attest to an early human presence in the region. Excavations at the modern town of Koltip have uncovered the remains of the Hittite Assyrian city of Kanesh, dating from the 3rd millennium BC. The tens of thousands of clay tablets recovered from the remains of an Assyrian merchant colony at Kanesh are among the oldest written documents ever discovered in Turkey. Gurame was inhabited as early as the Hittite era, 1800-1200 BC and later sat uncomfortably on the boundary between rival empires, first the Greeks and Persians and later the Byzantine Greeks and a host of rivals. This precarious political position meant that residents needed hiding places, and found them by tunneling into the rock itself. The site became a religious refuge during the early days of Christianity. By the 4th century AD, Christians fleeing Rome's persecution had arrived in some numbers and established monastic communities there. The Byzantine Christian monks excavated hundreds of dwellings and monasteries, each beautifully painted and decorated, beginning in the 7th century, which endure in well-preserved isolation to this day. Since the late 300s BC the name Cappadocia came to be restricted to the inland province, sometimes called Great Cappadocia, according to Herodotus, in the time of the Ionian Revolt, 499 BC, the Cappadocians were reported as occupying a region from Mount Doris to the vicinity of the Euxin, Black Sea. Cappadocia, in this sense, was bounded in the south by the chain of the Taurus Mountains that separate it from Cilicia, to the east by the upper Euphrates, to the north by Pontus, and to the west by Lycaonia and eastern Galatia. The earliest record of the name of Cappadocia dates from the late 6th century BC, when it appears in the trilingual inscriptions of two early Achaemenid kings, Darius I and Xerxes, as one of the countries, Old Persian Dahu, of the Persian Empire. In these lists of countries, the Old Persian name is Katpatrika. It was proposed that Katpatuka came from the Luan language, meaning low country. Subsequent research suggests that the adverb kata meaning down, below is exclusively Hittite, while its Luan equivalent is Xanta. The earlier derivation from Iranian who asked a land of good horses can hardly be reconciled with the phonetic shape of Kat Patuka. A number of other etymologies have also been offered in the past. Herodotus tells us that the name of the Cappadocians was applied to them by the Persians, while they were termed by the Greeks White Syrians. Cappadocia appears in the biblical account given in the book of Acts 2-9. The Cappadocians were named as one group hearing the Gospel account from Galileans in their own language on the day of Pentecost shortly after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Acts 2-5 seems to suggest that the Cappadocians in this account were God-fearing Jews. See Acts of the Apostles. The region is also mentioned in the Jewish Mishnah, in Ketabot 13-11, and in several places in the Talmud, including Yevimot.
Under the later kings of the Persian Empire, the Cappadocians were divided into two satrapies, or governments, with one comprising the central and inland portion, to which the name of Cappadocia continued to be applied by Greek geographers, while the other was called Bontus. The Kingdom of Cappadocia still existed in the time of Strabo, circa 64 BC, circa AD 24, as a nominally independent state. Cilicia was the name given to the district in which Caesarea, the capital of the whole country, was situated. The only two cities of Cappadocia considered by Strabo to deserve that appellation were Caesarea, originally known as Mazaka, and Tiana, not far from the foot of the Taurus. Cappadocia lies in central Anatolia, in the heartland of what is now Turkey. The relief consists of a high plateau over 1,000 meters in altitude that is pierced by volcanic peaks, with Mount Urshais, ancient Argaeus, near Kayseri, ancient Caesarea, being the tallest at 3,916 meters. The boundaries of historical Cappadocia are vague, particularly towards the west. To the south, the Taurus Mountains form the boundary with Cilicia and separate Cappadocia from the Mediterranean Sea. To the west, Cappadocia is bounded by the historical regions of Lycaonia to the southwest, and Galatia to the northwest. Due to its inland location and high altitude, Cappadocia has a markedly continental climate, with hot dry summers and cold snowy winters. Rainfall is sparse and the region is largely semi-arid. Cappadocia contain the sources of the Saras and Pyramus rivers with their higher affluents, and also the middle course of the Elise, and the whole course of the tributary of the Euphrates later called Tokmasu. But as no one of these rivers was navigable or served to fertilize the lands along its course, none has much importance in the history of the province. Cappadocia was known as Hatti in the Late Bronze Age and was the homeland of the Hittite power centered at Hattusa. After the fall of the Hittite Empire, with the decline of the Syro-Cappadocians, Mushki, after their defeat by the Lydian king Croesus in the 6th century BC, Cappadocia was ruled by a sort of feudal aristocracy, dwelling in strong castles and keeping the peasants in a servile condition, which later made them apt to foreign slavery. It was included in the third Persian satrapy in the division established by Darius but continued to be governed by rulers of its own, none apparently supreme over the whole country and all more or less tributaries of the great king. After ending the Persian Empire, Alexander the Great tried to rule the area through one of his military commanders. But Ariya raids previously satrap of the region, declared himself king of the Cappadocians. As Ariarath's I, 332-322 BC, he was a successful ruler, and he extended the borders of the Cappadocian kingdom as far as to the Black Sea. The kingdom of Cappadocia lived in peace until the death of Alexander. The previous empire was then divided into many parts, and Cappadocia fell to Eumenes. His claims were made good in 322 BC by the regent Perdiccas, who crucified Ariarathes, but in the dissensions which brought about Eumenes's death, Ariarathes II, the adopted son of Ariarathes I, recovered his inheritance and left it to a line of successors, who mostly bore the name of the founder of the dynasty. Persian colonists in the Cappadocian Kingdom cut off from their co-religionists in Iran proper, continued to practice Zoroastrianism. Strabo, observing them in the 1st century BC, records, 153.15, that these fire kindlers possessed many holy places of the Persian gods, as well as fire temples. In 314, Cappadocia was the largest province of the Roman Empire, and was part of the Diocese of Pontus. The region suffered famine in 368 described as the most severe ever remembered by Gregory of Nazianzus. Following the Battle of Manzikert in 1071, various Turkish clans under the leadership of the Seljukas began settling in Anatolia. 
With the rise of Turkish power in Anatolia, Cappadocia slowly became a tributary to the Turkish states that were established to the east and to the west, some of the native population converted to Islam with the rest forming the remaining Cappadocian Greek population. By the end of the early 12th century, Anatolian Seljuks had established their sole dominance over the region. With the decline and the fall of the Konya-based Seljuks in the second half of the 13th century, they were gradually replaced by successive Turkish-ruled states. Cappadocia remained part of the Ottoman Empire until 1922, when it became part of the modern state of Turkey. A fundamental change occurred in between when a new urban center, the first period of settlement in Gurame goes back to the Roman period. The Yusuf Koch, Ordahan, Dermush Kadir and Bezaran churches in Gurame, and houses and churches carved into rocks in the Azandir, Bagaldir, and Zemi valleys, all illustrate history and can be seen today. The Gurame Open Air Museum is the most visited site of the monastic communities in Cappadocia, see Churches of Gurame, Turkey, and is one of the most famous sites in central Turkey. The complex contains more than 30 carved from rock churches and chapels, some having superb frescoes inside, dating from the 9th century to the 11th century. In 1975, a study of three small villages in central Cappadocia, Tuzkoi, Karin and Sardra found that mesothelioma was causing 50% of all deaths. Initially, this was attributed to arianite, a zeolite mineral with similar properties to asbestos, but detailed epidemiological investigation demonstrated that the substance causes the disease mostly in families with a genetic predisposition to mineral fiber carcinogenesis. The studies are being extended to other parts of the region.